morning everyone. Parang, parang tulog pa. Good morning po. Pwede ba natin bigyan ng best clap offering ang ating Panginoon? Amen. And, eh, parang kulang pa yan. Bigyan natin yung best clap offering natin for our living God. Amen and amen. So it's a beautiful Sunday. It's a blessed Sunday to praise and worship our God. So thank you for the COG Das Marines team. So sila po ay tumulong po sa atin ngayon for our praise and worship. Are you blessed with our praise and worship today? Amen. Pwede ba natin palapakan ng COG Das Marines for helping us today? And that's what we're praying for na in the next months to come, the next weeks to come, we will have our own praise and worship team already. Excited ba kayo dun? Amen and amen. So I'm also excited for that. And, our, and today, I'm very much excited to preach to you God's Word. At sino po dito ang excited makinig ng salita ng Panginoon? Amen. Sa lahat ng excited, sige po, palakpakan natin ng ating Panginoon. Amen and amen. So today, uh, last week po, ang pinag-usapan po natin is about sacrifice. So yan yung gusto natin gawin dito in our worship. We sacrifice our best offering for the Lord. And today, with regards to worship naman, we want to establish something. So, with regards to establishing something, ano po bang ibig sabihin nun? So, when we look at our dictionary, ang ibig sabihin po pala ng establish is to found. Ibig sabihin may simulan, may i-birth po tayo right now. And not only that, is for us to build something from nothing into something and bring into stable basis. So, ini-establish po natin yung foundation. May inaayos po tayo yung groundwork niyan para po makatayo po ng mataas yung ating ginagawa. At alam po, in establishing something, it's never easy. In starting something, it's never easy. Lalo na pag may ine-establish tayo, may binibuild tayong something. Just like, po, sino po dito ay may mga bahay na? So, wala pong may bahay? So, ito na lang po, pwede natin i-consider na bahay. So, siyempre most of us, meron po tayong sariling bahay at lahat po yan ay nagsimula in building the foundation of it. May you're establishing its ground, you're establishing its roots, you're establishing its foundation. At sa pag-establish po niyan, hindi po yan ganun kadali. At alam niyo po, sa ating ginagawa rin po natin, nakikita po natin yung mga ushers natin dito and volunteers and workers na may suot po silang home. At yan po ating uh, theme for today, yung ating home for God's people. So right now, we're establishing this home. We want a home for the people of God, especially for all of us who are in God's house. We want to build a home for the people outside our church where there, there is a home for them to experience God's love, for them to experience God's joy, for them to experience God's hope. Gusto po ba natin yun? Amen. Gusto natin ma-experience nila yan. That's why we're building a home for God's people. At sa ginagawa po natin na to, as we're establishing something new in this city, some may appreciate it. Siguro po, mostly sa atin, ah, natutuwa po tayo sa ginagawa natin ngayon. May mga natutuwa rin. Siguro yung hotel po sa atin, siguro natutuwa po sa atin. Or other churches of Church of God, pwedeng natutuwa po sila sa atin. Pero pwede din po yung iba po outside this church, outside this community, pwede pong sila ay going against us. Pwede po silang hindi po natutuwa sa atin. Siguro they're opposing our, our desire para maging born again Newport City ito, para ma-establish tong simbahan ito. We don't know. So, some may appreciate it, some may not, some may go with us, some may go, go against us. So, kung ano man po yun, nevertheless, ang ine-establish po natin ay will ng ating Panginoon. Amen? So, pag will ng ating Panginoon, I believe we're gonna make significant changes in our beloved city sa Manila po. Amen po ba dun? Amen and amen. And you know what, when we go to the Bible, ang pinag-uusapan po natin is Zerubbabel and we're gonna see his name sa Ezra, and you could open your Bibles in Ezra chapter 3, verse 3. So natapos na po natin two weeks ago ang chapter ang verse 1, last week ang verse 2. Right now, we're already in verse 3, and they're also establishing something. At ito po ang kanya lang ginagawa po. In verse 3, it says, Though fear had come upon them because of the people of those countries, they set the altar on its basis. So they're establishing something. And they offered burnt offerings on it to the Lord, both the morning and evening burnt offerings. So could we bow down our heads and let us pray today. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus Christ. Lord God, we just invite your presence, Lord God, to be in this place. Lord God, we don't want to do this by might. We don't want to do this by, in our own power, Lord God. We want to do this in your spirit, Lord God. We believe, Lord God, today 
we're going to experience your supernatural presence. We believe today, Lord God, you're going to arrive in this place. Lord God, mararamdaman namin ang awesome presence, awesome glory mo in this place. And right now, open our hearts, open our minds, Lord God, that we may know and believe and receive who you are, Lord God, in our lives. Thank you so much, God. Thank you for this wonderful day. We claim the victory and we give you back all the glory, all the, all the praise in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Everybody shout, amen and amen. So again, let's give God our very best clap offering. Amen and amen. So right there, so they were establishing, they were trying to rebuild God's house and they're establishing worship. Kaya lang, the problem there, they are not in Israel. They are not in their own land. So sa country po na yon, alam po, they have their own different religious culture. They have their own religious practices na hindi katulad nung kila Zerubbabel, hindi katulad nung pag-worship sa one true and living God. Kaya po sa gagawin po nilang pag-establish ng worship, Siguro po ang una pong nilang naisip, kaya po may fear sa kanilang puso kasi baka pwede po silang patayin. Kasi hindi po sila, sanay yung country na yon sa pag-worship sa one true living God. So pwede po silang i-persecute and worse, pwede po silang ipatay para po hindi matuloy ang kanilang ginagawa ng pag-establish at pag-rebuild ng temple ng Panginoon. Nevertheless, alam niyo po, though there was fear in their hearts, hindi po sila nagpatinag po doon, they were not stopped by that. They still continued to establish worship. At yan po ang ating pag-uusapan ngayon. We're gonna go back to our series, to the blueprint of worship. And our title for today is the Tabernacle of Worship. So pakisabi nga sa katabi mo, Tabernacle of Worship. Amen and amen. So, bakit ba kailangan mag-start sa worship? What's so important about starting with worship? And more practical, matatanong po natin sa ating sarili, Ano bang importance ng praise and worship? So pagpasok po natin dito, andyan po yung COG Dasma, so tumugtog po sila. Ano ba yan? Mga songs lang ba yan? Ang mga tinugtog ba nila ay nandyan lang to entertain us? So ang, ang, uh, ang pag-praise and worship ba ay pang-antay lang sa mga late? So pakitanong nga yung katabi mo, late ka ba ngayon? So hindi yan pang-antay lang ng late. So kung hindi yan pang-antay ng late, para saan ba? Para saan ba ang praise and worship? Why do we need to establish Worship. So para po mas maintindihan po natin ng worship, balikan po natin ang isang man of worship, ang isang marunong talaga mag-worship sa Panginoon. At walang iba po dyan ay kundi si Moses. So you could turn your Bibles in Exodus chapter 40, verse 34. And it says here, while they were setting something up, ito pong sabi din, the cloud covered the tabernacle of meeting and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. So yan po yung na-experience po nila. May sinet up po sila. Ang tawag po dyan ay yung tabernacle. At nung nag-worship po dyan sila sa tabernacle, ang presensya ng Panginoon ay bumaba. Na-experience po nila yung glory ng ating Panginoon. So bago tayo magpatuloy dun, ito po ang itsura ng tabernacle. So yan po ay parang isang simpleng tent lang in the time of Moses. In the time of David, ibang itsura na naman po yan. Pero dito muna tayo kay Moses. So ang lahat mong nang nakalagay dyan, kung anong curtain ang gagamitin, ano ang gold na gagamitin, ano yung may mga pieces, everything po was specified specifically by the Lord. Si Lord po ang nag-design yan. At basically po, para saan po ba yung tabernacle, para saan po ba yung tent of meeting na yan, basically po, dyan po nakikipagtagpo si Moses sa Panginoon. That's where Moses meets with the Lord. That's where Moses worships God. So yan po ang, uh, yan po ang use po ng tabernacle. At alam niyo po, para po mas maintindihan po natin, in Hebrew po, ang pronunciation po pala niyan, ang word po pala ng, sa Hebrew po ng tabernacle is mishkan. Pakisabi nga po yun, mishkan. So ang mishkan po pala, ang ibig sabihin po niyan ay dwelling place. So as we worship the Lord, as we meet with the Lord, nakakatawa po. Why? Because the Lord dwells with us. Sinasamahan po tayo ng ating Panginoon. Gusto po ba natin yun, nasamahan tayo ng Panginoon? Amen. We want God to dwell with us. Gusto natin ang presensya ng Panginoon ay feel at home sa atin. Gusto ba natin in our home, ma-feel at home ang ating Panginoon? Amen. We want God, your presence the Lord, ay mag-feel at home in our home. At maramdaman natin yung supernatural presence na Panginoon. So, yan nga po, as they were setting up the tabernacle, nandyan po si Moses, we na worship niya si Lord. And in Exodus 40, ano po sabi? Then the cloud of glory, the king of glory, the presence of God, filled this room, filled this tabernacle with this presence. May cloud daw po. At para po mas ma-visualize natin, may nakita po ako sa Facebook, sa YouTube, na anong itsura ng cloud? 
sa panahon po natin ngayon. So panoorin po natin tong video na to. Pwede ba natin palakpangan si Lord for that? So medyo nakakaiyak po siya kasi yan po yung cloud of glory. Ngayon po, ano yan, su- uh, natural cloud lang po yan in our time today. Yan, normal storm. But in the time of Moses, yung cloud po na yan, yan yung nag-feel sa tabernacle. Yan yung, yan yung sumasama, yan yung dumadapo, yan po yung nagdaduel sa loob ng tabernacle ni Moses habang siya ay nag-worship sa ating Panginoon. Na-amaze po ba kayo? Parang, parang natakot kayo. na po ba kayo? Amen. So gusto ba natin yung presence ni Lord ay samahan din tayo ng ganun? Amen. Gusto, so, so, parang, hindi, parang hindi ako convinced na gusto nyo. Gusto nyo po ba yun? Sa lahat ng gusto sumigaw ng hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ipinalakpakan po natin ang ating Panginoon. So that's the, the cloud of glory that God has for us nung time ni Moses. At pwede din kaya natin ma-experience yun. So in verse 40, in chapter 40, verse 35, nung na-experience po nila yung cloud na yun, paano ba yun? Ano nangyari dun? In verse 35, it says, And Moses was not able to enter the tabernacle of meeting because the cloud rested above it and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Yung cloud po na yun, na-amaze na tayo. Wow, ang ganda ng cloud, ang ganda ng storm. Yun po ay sinadya ni Lord na makasama si Moses. At ano po yun sinasabi ni Lord sa ating ngayon? The tabernacle of worship, what does it do? It fills the whole room with God's glory. Gusto po ba natin na yung buong room na to ay punuin ng presensya ng Panginoon? Amen. Ako rin po, gusto ko po yun. That's my dream, that's my vision. That's what we really want in our heart that this whole room be filled with the presence of God. At wala na po akong ibang mahanap na example. Nag-iisip po ako in the back of my mind. Paano ko ba ma-illustrate? Paano ko po ba ma-share sa inyo yung story kung paano kami binisita ng Panginoon? Wala na po akong ibang example. Kundi babalik po ulit ako dun sa 3 p.m. service po sa COG Das Marinas. Sa mga taga, taga COG, sino naka-experience nun nung 3 p.m.? Meron ba dun? Andre, kasama ka dun? So meron dun sa likod na naka-experience nung 3 p.m. service. And I've shared this once and I want, want to share it again to you. So ako po yung drummer at that time, ako po yung tumutugtog ng drums, and it was an ordinary service. So nag-start po kami sa praise and worship, nag-praise po kami, nag-worship po kami, normal Sunday. And then you know what? What happened? Nung time po na mag-preach na po yung pastor, pag-akit niya po sa stage, sabi niya sa dad ko, I cannot preach. Bisita, bisita po yun, galing abroad. So tinatry niya po mag-preach, tinatry niya po Uh, basahin yung outline niya, tinatry niya sumunod sa program, pero hindi po siya makapreach. Bakit po? To cut the long story short, kasi po yung presensya ng Panginoon ay binisita po kami at that Sunday at 3 p.m. service. So no one could preach at lahat po, wala pong ginawa, nagtuloy na lang kami sa aming tugtugan at kami po ay nagpuri sa aming Panginoon. So medyo mabigat po yung feeling namin, mabigat po yung kwakiramdam ko habang ako po ay nagda-drums kasi ang bigat ng presence ni Lord eh. So tumigil na po kami sa pagtugtog pero unbelievable, ano po nangyari? Kahit tumigil na po kami ng tunog, may naririnig pa rin kaming tunog. May naririnig pa rin kaming music at ang naririnig po namin ay parang orchestra. At naniniwala po kami na yung angels from heaven ay kasabay namin na mag-worship at that very moment. Amen po ba dun? Sige palakpakan po natin si Lord for that. So nagulo po yung whole program, anong po nangyari, hindi na po nakapreach yung pastor, at we just enjoyed God's presence. Every time na mapag-uusapan po namin yung sa dasma, kinikilabutan kami kasi unbelievable. Naramdaman talaga namin ang presensya ng Panginoon. Ang presence ni Lord ay pumasok sa COG Dasma Rinas and filled the whole room with His glory and we were not able to do anything but worship the Lord. At yan po ang masasabi ko sa inyo, there's nothing to do. But bow down in worship when God's glory fills this room. Wala po tayong ibang magagawa kundi lumuhod sa ating tuhod in awe of God's glory. Amen. And in verse 38, what happened there for the, for the cloud of the Lord was above the tabernacle by day 
and fire was over it by night in the sight of all the house of Israel throughout all their journey. At ang nakakatawa po doon sa time ni Moses, hindi po yun ang nangyari ng one time lang. Bukas, wala na. Next week, wala na. Hindi po. Ang nangyari po kay Moses, sinamahan po sila ni Lord ngayon with the cloud, of, uh, with the cloud in the morning and the pillar of fire by night. Every day po silang sinasamahan ng Panginoon. Gusto niyo po ba gano'n na ma-experience nyo sa inyong buhay? Nasamahan kayo ng Panginoon every single day of your lives? Amen. At yun po yung naranasan po nila Moses. At alam niyo po kung ako po yung kalaban nila, syempre hindi naman po sila yung mag-isa lang in that wilderness. Hindi lang po sila yung uh, mga tao doon. May pwede po mag-attack sa kanila, may pwede po silang mga enemies. Pero kung ako po yung kalaban po nila, pag nakita ko po yung cloud in the morning at nakita ko po yung pillar of fire by night, Ano pong gagawin natin? Kung ako po yung tatakbo na po ko. Hindi ko po haharapin sila Moses kasi nakakatakot kasi kasama na na ang ating buhay na Diyos. Amen? Amen. At sa atin din po, as we're doing this in our church, we're establishing worship here, we're all worshiping the one true and living God. And there will be people who would try to stop us. There will be people who would like to destroy us and stop us from worshiping and serving our God. Pero ako po yung naniniwala, pag na-experience po nila, ang na-experience natin ngayon, ang presensya ng Panginoon, wala po silang ibang magagawa, kundi papurihan din ang ating buhay na Diyos. Amen? Amen. Sige po, let's give God our very best clap offering. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's the power of God's presence. That's the glory of our God. Gusto ba natin ma-experience ang Panginoon natin? Amen. Parang ayaw nyo, ayaw nyo talaga ma-experience si Lord. Ah. Gusto nyo ba ma-experience si Lord today? Amen and amen. So how do we establish this tabernacle worship? Paano ba natin ito sisimulan? So let's go back to uh, verse 1 to 3. And it says here, Then the Lord said to Moses, Set up the tabernacle, the tent of meeting. Itayo mo daw yan. And on the first day of the first month, place the ark of the covenant law in it, and shield the ark with a curtain. So lahat ng instructions po binigay ni Lord. At ang pinaka holy of the holy na piyesa po doon, marami pong pieces doon, marami pong instruments doon, pero ang pinaka binavalue po nila na most holy place is yung ark of the covenant. So yan po yung pinaka binavalue po nila kasi po yan din po ay specifically designed by the Lord. At ano po ang nakalagay po dito sa Ark of the Covenant? Ito po ang nakalagay sa Ark of the Covenant. So ang tablets of stone na ginawa mismo ng ating Panginoon. This is handwritten by God. This came from God at binigay niya yan kay Moses. At yan po ang nakalagay sa Ark of the Covenant. Something that personally came from the Lord. So siguro po hindi na po tayo makaka, makaka-relate po sa mga ganyan tablet para po mas makarelate po tayo. Ganito na po yung tablet po natin ngayon. So yan po. So sino po may ganyan? So baka na dyan na po nakalagay yung Ten Commandments ng ating Panginoon. But kidding aside, alam niyo po, dito po talaga nakalagay ang Ark of the Covenant. Ito po yung top view po ng Tabernacle of Moses. So dyan po yung entrance from the East Gate. At dito po nilalagay yan sa Ark of the Covenant in the most holy place. So that's where it's placed, most holy. Dyan po si Lord God Almighty na hikipagtagpo po kay Moses. At ano pong tinuturo po sa atin dito ng Panginoon, mamaya po mala- maintindihan po natin. Why? Because the tabernacle of worship sets the proper worship for our God. So bakit po? Kasi yung pinapapurihan po natin ay hindi po tao lang. Ang pinapapurihan po natin ay hindi lang po gawa sa bato. Ang pinapapurihan po natin, Diyos, ay hindi lang po gawa sa gold. Ang pinapapurihan po natin, Diyos, ay yung buhay na Diyos na nagligtas po sa atin. Ang pinapapurihan po natin, Diyos, ay yung Diyos po na gumawa sa atin. At ang Diyos na pinapapurihan natin ay buhay na buhay. Amen po ba doon? Amen. Sige po, balakpangan po natin siya dyan. And this Lord of Lords, this King of Kings, this God of everything who created all of us here, hindi pala pwedeng basta-basta lang yung ating worship. May proper worship pala na dapat ibigay sa ating Panginoon. So sa, uh, para po mas makita po natin, ano pong mangyayari kapag mali pala yung ating worship, mali pa yung service natin sa Panginoon. In 2 Samuel chapter 6, verse 6 to 7, may time po na, in the time of David, abante po tayo onte, may time po na kinaraga po nila yung Ark of the Covenant. So ano po nangyari, nililipat po nila yung Ark of the Covenant at ito po yung nangyari, yung isa pong tagabuhat, tignan po natin kung ano nangyari sa kanya kasi may mali siyang ginawa. So what happened here in verse 6, it says, And when they came to Nashon's threshing floor, Uzzah put out his hand to the ark of God and took hold of it for the oxen stumbled. 
Kasi po, hinahatak po yun ng isang oxen at yung Ark of the Covenant babagsak. So si Uza nagkusang loob. May right intention naman kasi ayaw niyang madumihan yung Ark of the Covenant. Ayaw niya po na bumagsak yun, iniingatan niya yun, responsibility niya yun. So nahawakan niya po, nahawakan niya yung Ark of the Covenant. Akala niya, ikakaganda niya po yun. Akala niya, it will give him honor. Kaya lang ano po nangyari, then the anger of the Lord was aroused against Uza. God struck him there for his error and he died there by the Ark of the Covenant. Hindi niya alam na last day niya na pala yun. Dahil sa maling ginawa po niya. Bakit? Because the Ark of the Covenant is the Holy of Holies. Ang Panginoong Diyos po natin ay nagdadwell po dun. Kaya pag hinawakan mo yun at hindi ikaw yung dapat humawak, dapat po kasi priest po yung hawak nun. Nung hinawakan niya, hindi pala siya karapat dapat hawakan yun. Yun po, it cost him his death. Not the proper worship for our living God. Ayan po ang sinasabi sa atin ngayon ng Panginoon, you may have the right intention, but with the wrong execution, it may cause you harm. So sige, tama yung ating motibo, tama yung ating perspective, tama po yung ating puso, pero kung mali naman po natin ine-execute, nako po, ito po ay ikakapahamak po natin. Kaya dapat alam po natin ang tamang worship na ibigay sa Panginoon. Amen po ba dun? Why? Because God deserves our best worship. Amen? Amen. At gusto ni Lord, proper yung worship na ibibigay natin sa Kanya. Bakit po? Because it's for our own good. Gusto ni Lord na tayo ay i-bless at hindi maparusahan. Amen po ba yun? Amen and amen. So, ito po ang tabernacle of worship. So, ganito po pala ang flow po ng worship natin dapat. So, manggagaling po siya sa East Gate. Yan po ang entrance ng tabernacle. At nang una pong papasukan po ay yung altar po, yung pinag-usapan po natin last Sunday, the altar. And in the altar, that's where we do our sacrifices. So last week po, pinag-usapan po natin, pag, nag, pag nag-offer po tayo, ang bibigay po natin ay yung ating best. Ang bibigay po natin yung purest of the purest. Bakit po? Yan ang deserve ng ating Panginoon. Amen? Amen. At dahil po dyan, kaya po sa ating, makikita po natin yung flow po ng ating praise and worship dito. So, pag nagsisimula po yung kantahan po, di ba? Ang sinisimulan po ay fast songs. Tama po ba yun? So, yung mga songs po na yun ay hindi lang po yun fast songs. Hindi lang po yan nandyan para pasayawin tayo. Ang fast songs po na yun, ang tawag po dun ay praise. So, as we praise, bakit po ba tayo nagpipraise? Bakit? Kasi we admire what God has done in our lives. Amen po ba dun? Parang hindi kayo naniniwala ulit. Amen po ba dun? Amen. So we admire what God has done. Kaya po pag tayo po ay nagkantahan sa first part ng praise and worship, as we praise, gusto natin tayo po ay tumatalon, tayo po ay sumasayaw, tinataas po natin ng lahat. We want to, to give our explosive praise. Bakit? Yan ang karapat dapat ibigay sa ating Panginoon. Amen? Amen. Pwede ba natin sampulan ng Panginoon with our best clap offering? Amen and amen. That's why po sa, sa first part po in this altar, Bakit ba tayo, ba't ba sila nagsasacrifice ng kambing? Ba't ba sila nagsasacrifice ng oxen? Because that's their act of saying, Lord, we admire you. We admire what you've done in my life. We admire you on how you've moved in our country. We admire what you've done in the past. And we say thank you to you. Papasalamat. May dapat ba tayong ipasalamat sa Panginoon ngayon? Amen. Marami tayong dapat ipasalamat. That's why every time na tayo po ay pumupunta dito every Sunday, nagsisimula tayo sa praise. Dahil gusto natin pasalamatan at ang ating buhay ng Diyos. Amen? Amen. So anong pong sunod dyan? Pupunta po siya dito sa next part at ang tinatawag po dyan is the time of cleansing and forgiveness. Kaya po after po nung praise part, hindi lang po yung fast song, yung praise part, yung next song po doon bago po mag-worship, yung nasa gitna po doon, it's a personal worship for the Lord. Ros, yung kinanta nga po ni Bon kanina, when I come, di ba, we ask for cleansing, we ask for forgiveness, at yun yung time natin to have this personal time with God. Kaya puro I, puro me, I worship you, I surrender all, kaya po may ganong song po dun. So hindi po yun aksidente na nilagay, intentional po yun sa flow po ng ating praise and worship, kasi yan po ang flow po ng tabernacle worship po natin. And after that po, susunod po dyan is yung worship na po talaga natin, high worship for our living God. And as we worship the Lord, hindi lang po yun slow songs. Hindi po tawag ng slow songs, ang tawag po dyan worship. Kaya po, praise and worship. 
Kasi yan po ang ating flow. And as we worship, it is our expression of adoration sa ating Panginoon. We worship Him, we respect Him, we honor Him. How good and gracious is our God. Naniniwala po ba kayo na napakabuti ng ating Panginoon? It's not just of what He's done in our lives, but who He is in our lives. Naging mabuti po ba ang Panginoon sa inyo? Parang hindi naging mabuti yan. Naging mabuti po ba ang Panginoon sa inyo? Amen. Kung naging mabuti ang ating Panginoon, pwede ba sumigaw ng hallelujah? Amen and amen. And that's why we worship. So kung hindi po natin kilala yung ating Panginoon, pagdating po natin dito every Sunday, wala pong laman yung ating worship. Bakit? Sino po ba ang Panginoon sa inyo? Siya ba ang iyong comforter? Siya ba ang iyong joy? Siya ba ang iyong love? Siya ba ang iyong prince of peace? Siya ba ang iyong uh, great reward? Who is God to you? Because kung sino ang Panginoon sa iyo, yan po ang lalim ng ating worship para sa ating Panginoon. Amen? Amen. Palakpakan natin ang ating Panginoon. Hallelujah! And when we do this, when we praise, we ask for forgiveness, we worship the Lord, at the end po, we're gonna have an encounter with the great and living God. Amen. We're gonna experience His supernatural power. We're gonna experience His glory. Amazing. This is an amazing experience. So it's, that's what tabernacle worship does for us. It sets the atmosphere for God's arrival in this place. Gusto po ba natin na datnan tayo ng Panginoon ngayon? Amen. We want an encounter. Ayaw po natin na on a Sunday, papasok tayo dito sa simbahan at lalabas tayong same pa rin. Ako po, hindi ko po kayo kayo baguhin. Pag nagtugtugan po dito, hindi po kayo kayo kayang baguhin ng praise and worship team. Ang kaya lang po magbago sa ating puso, sa ating isipan, sa ating buhay is yung presensya ng ating Panginoon. And that's how you're gonna have a changed life, a wonderful life from this day forward. Hallelujah. So, kaya po, pag tayo po ay nagpe-praise and worship, yun nga po, sabi ko po kanina, hindi lang po yan pang antay po ng late. Hindi po yan pang, ano lang, pang entertain. But as we praise and worship, we really thank God for what He's done in our lives. We really worship Him for who He is. Because gusto natin, sa ating praise and worship, sa ating worship service, datnan tayo ng Panginoon. Bisitahin tayo ng Panginoon. Gusto natin ang Panginoon, Heso Kristo, ay mag-dwell, mag-stay, mag-feel at home. In our presence. Kaya po magpe-praise and worship tayo, nire-ready niya yung ating puso, nire-ready niya yung ating isip para pagdating ng preaching, pagdating po ng Word of God, kaya po na ready po ang ating buhay, tanggapin ang Panginoon sa ating buhay. Kaya po pag tayo po ay nalilate, pag tayo po ay hindi nakaka-attend ng praise and worship, naku, you miss a lot. You miss a lot. Kasi andun yung lalim kung bakit po natin ito ginagawa lahat. Amen po ba nun? Amen. Parang tinamahan ako doon ha. Late ako kanina. <laughs> no problem. Next week po, pwede po tayong buwawi kay Lord. Pwede po tayong dumating ng 9.30 a.m. So, saan po ba nagsimula ito lahat? Itong tabernacle worship, itong tabernacle meeting, yung ginagawa po ni Moses. Nagsimula po yan dito sa Exodus chapter 33, verse 7. And it says here, Moses took his tent and pitched it outside the camp, far from the camp, and called it the tabernacle of meeting. Kasi si Moses may puso po siya mag-worship sa Panginoon. Eh. Si Moses po gusto makipagkita sa Panginoon. Gusto niya ng personal time with the Lord. So, noong mga panahon na wala pa yung tabernacle, hindi pa nasa set up yung magandang tent na yun. Yung personal tent ni Moses, nagpakalayo po siya dun. At doon niya sinet up, in-establish niya doon, at doon po siya nag-worship sa Panginoon. A worship that is alone, a worship that is in secret. Hindi ko naman kailangan ipakita sa buong mundo na nag-worship ako eh. May tugtugan o wala. Ang gusto ni Lord makita yung worship natin, personally. May nakakakita o wala, mag-isa o may kasama, pwede pala tayo mag-worship. At nung in-establish po ni Moses yun, sinet up niya po yun, ganito dapat yung tamang worship. Ano nangyari po in verse 7, in the next verse? And it came to pass that everyone who sought the Lord went out to the tabernacle of meeting which was outside the camp. 
Kung ano po yung sinet na worship ni Moses, ginaya po yun ng mga ibang taong kasama niya. Hindi ko po alam kung libo-libo po yun o milyon kasi buong Israel po yung kasama niya. At lahat po yun, gusto namin yung ganong klaseng worship tulad ni Moses. Gusto namin mag-worship din ng ganon sa Panginoon. Sinundan po siya. The people followed Moses. At alam niyo po, ganon din po yung gusto po natin mangyari sa ating simbahan. That in our home, in our church, we want to give God the right worship. We want to give God the best worship. Because this is the worship that He deserves. At as we are setting up here, kasama po kayo doon, as we are setting this worship, Gusto po ba natin, ganun din yung ating worship natin sa Panginoon? Amen po ba dun? Amen. Because as we're worshiping like that, we're setting something, we're establishing something, someday, maybe in the next months, sana yung buong Marriott maki-worship din po sa atin. Sana yung mga taga-resorts world maki-worship din sa atin kasi nakikita nila, anong meron tong mga taong to? Anong meron tong simbahan na to? Bakit? May kakaiba. Sana yung mga hotel na kasama po dati dito, Remington, Belmont, someday, pag na-establish po natin to, sundan po nila yung worship na binibigyan natin sa Panginoon. Yung buong Newport City, someday, magpuri rin sila ng ganito sa Panginoon. Yung buong Manila, buong Pilipinas, mag-worship din sa Panginoon. Amen po ba doon? Gusto po ba natin yun? Gusto po ba natin yun? Amen. And that worship starts with you. Starts with you. Starts with you. Starts with me. Kaya every time na sumisimba po tayo dito, every time na magpipraise and worship tayo, it's a new privilege. It's a new opportunity para papurihan natin ang ating Panginoon, ang ating buhay na Diyos. At ang maganda po doon, may nangyayari sa worship mo. May ginagawa ang Panginoon. May plano pala siya sa ating ginagawa. And what happened in verse 8, it says, So it was, whenever Moses went out to the tabernacle, that all the people rose, tumayo po sila. And each man stood at his tent door and watched Moses, pinapanood pala nila si Moses, until he had gone into the tabernacle. Bakit? Kasi alam nilang may mangyayaring maganda eh. They are waiting to be amazed. They're watching what will happen to Moses. Ano ito po mangyayari kay Moses? In verse 9 it says, And it came to pass when Moses entered the tabernacle, that the pillar of cloud descended and stood at the door of the tabernacle, and the Lord talked with Moses. Wow. Yung presensya ng Painoon, binisita si Moses. Yung King of Glory, His awesome presence, naramdaman po nila. At nung naramda, nakita po nila yon sa buhay ni Moses, sa worship ni Moses, ano pong ginawa po nila? In verse 10, And all the people saw that the pillar of cloud standing at the tabernacle door, and all the people rose and worshipped each man in his tent door. Kahit taganood lang sila, nung naramdaman po nila yung presensya ng Panginoon, nung nakita po nila yung glory ng Panginoon, wala po silang ibang nagawa kung hindi papurihan din ang ating buhay ng Diyos. And that's what we want to happen here. In our whole city, in our families, when they see this, when they experience this, wala po silang ibang magagawa kung hindi papurihan din ang ating buhay ng Diyos. Amen po ba doon? Pwede ba natin palapakan na ating Panginoon? Hallelujah, hallelujah. And finally, what do we get with the tabernacle of worship in verse 11? It says, So the Lord spoke to Moses face to face as a man speaks to his friend. Wow. Sobrang intimate po ng worship nila ni Moses. Sobrang intimate ng relationship ni God and Moses na para siyang kaibigan talaga. At yan po ang nagagawa po ng tabernacle worship. It grants us access to intimacy with the Lord. Gusto niyo po maging intimate with the Lord? Gusto ba natin ng personal relationship with God? That's, what's, what, that's what we get 
ng tabernacle worship. Pwede tayong maging intimate with God. Nabibigyan tayo ng access, hindi po lahat, nung time po nila, hindi po lahat allowed to go to the tabernacle of meeting si Moses lang. But when you're a friend of God, it's possible to be a friend of God. Amen? We are a friend of God. And we're granted access to this intimate God that we serve. We could experience Him. And lastly, nung babalik po na po si Moses, and he would return to the camp, but his servant Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man, did not depart from the tabernacle. So hindi lang po si Moses yung naka-experience. Meron po siyang assistant, meron siyang young man, si Joshua, na naka-experience din ng presence ni Lord. At si Joshua po, nung na-experience po niya yun, hindi na po siya nakaalis. He remained there and stayed there. At yan ang gusto po mangyari ng Panginoon sa atin ngayon. It's for you and for me to stay in the awesome presence of our God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. At alam niyo po, yan po ang ating gagawin ngayong umaga na to. We're gonna experience the Lord today. Do you believe in that? And if you believe that with all your heart, etong na-experience po nila Moses na Panginoon, he's the, he's the same God yesterday, today, and forevermore. At itong buhay na Diyos na yun is in this place, is in this room, and is inviting you. Do you want to experience me? Do you want to experience my power? Do you want to experience my glory? I'm here today. And I'm granting you access to stay in my awesome presence. So today, as the worship team sings this song, there's no other challenge here for today. But if you want to experience the Lord in your life today, He is here. And He's inviting you to come in this altar. And we will worship the one true and living God. So if that's you today, sama-sama po tayo dito na magpuri sa ating Panginoon. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, the atmosphere is changing now For the Spirit of the Lord is here The evidence is all around That the Spirit of the Lord Jesus is here, is here. For the spirit of the Lord is here. Yes, you may come. The evidence is all around. Yes, Jesus. That the spirit of the Lord is here. Yes, yes. The atmosphere is changing now in this place, Lord. The Spirit of the Lord is here. Just need to open your heart. The evidence is all around. You can worship. The Spirit of the Lord is here.
Sing out. Fill our hearts with your love. 
We lift those hands to the Lord today as a symbol of our surrender. As we surrender this life, as we overflow in this place, we overflow in the presence of God is overflowing in this place.
Hallelujah, we surrender. As we cry out, we sing hallelujah. starting in our church, Jesus. We're just starting, Lord God, in this home. And we're in wait that we're going to be amazed on how you're going to use this church to do amazing things all for your greater glory. Hallelujah. 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 Let's give God our very best clap off. hungry hearts for you. Thank you, Lord God, for these thirsty hearts for you. And they're here to worship you. Because they're here in need of you, Lord. They want to experience you. They want to feel you. 
We want to feel your embrace, Lord God, today. And Lord God, thank God it's not our last day today. Because tomorrow we could worship you again. The next day we could worship you again. Next Sunday, Lord God, we could worship you again, Lord. In every opportunity, in every privilege, Lord God, we want to give you our very best worship. We want to give you our all in all. Because you deserve our very best. You deserve our everything now. our lives, Lord God. We are your people who came here this morning. Who raised their hands, Lord God, saying, I want to worship you. Because I want to experience you. And we just want you, Lord God, to continually flow in our lives. We want you, Lord God, to continually flow in this place. Oh, Lord Jesus Christ, flow in this city. Flow in this country. Lord God, we are a baby church. We are a baby Christian. And Lord God, this, some of us, this may be our first time to raise up our hands. This may be our first time to worship like this. Lord. But Lord God, that is not a hindrance for us to giving you our all. This is not our wall, Lord God, not to give you our very best. Every time this time, Lord God, when we praise and worship you, we're going to give you our all, Lord God, because your presence dwells with us. Because your power is here with us. Your glory, Lord God, set us in our midst. And we don't want to miss that. We don't want to miss that, Lord God. And for those who came here in front, could you just raise up your hands to the Lord? This is our act of surrender to Him. Both hands high. Surrendering everything. Surrendering all. Surrendering your best, your life to God. And join me in this prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, here I am today. Here I am today. My life, my life is yours. Is yours. My life, my life is meant, is meant to worship you. To worship you. To worship you. To worship you. I live. I live. That's my purpose. That's my purpose. To worship you. To worship you. So when I don't do it, so when I do it, when I don't do it, when I don't do it, I miss this life. I miss this life. Sayang. Sayang. Yeah, thank you, Lord. Okay, thank you, Lord. For your word. For your word. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For the privilege. For the privilege. Of you. Of you. Visiting us. Visiting us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For allowing us. For allowing us. To have that access. To have that access. To be your friend. To be your friend. To stay. To stay. In your presence. In your presence. I don't want to miss that. I will lose this life. That's why that's why I commit I commit in every moment in every moment in every opportunity in every opportunity in every privilege in every privilege to praise to praise and worship you and worship you I will dance for you I will dance for you I will you. jump for you I will jump for you I will shout for you I will shout for you I will you. raise up my hands I will raise up my I hands. will give you my all I will give you I my will all. give you my everything I will give you my because everything because this is the worship because this is the worship that you deserve. You deserve my all. Hallelujah. My but just all. give God your very best Hallelujah. clap offering. Give God your very best worship. Give God your everything. Your all in all. That's what this church is meant for. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, for these lives. Thank you, Lord God, for allowing us to worship you. Thank you, Lord God, for putting us in a country, Lord God, that does not persecute us when we do our church services. Thank you, Lord God, for putting in a, in a city, Lord God, that there's a possibility for change, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God, for positioning us here. It's not an accident that we are here. We are called to be here. And we want to serve our purpose to be the salt and light of the world, of this city. All for your greater glory. Hallelujah. Today, we raise up our tithes and offering. This is our act of worship to Him as well. Hallelujah, Lord God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Lord God, we want to give you our very best, Lord God. Even in the times, Lord God, that we don't see it, Lord No one computes our tithes. No one looks at our allowance every month, our salary every month. But Lord, we don't want to hide anything from you. We want to be true to you. 
And as we give you our tithes and offering, Lord God, we give you our very best. We give you, Lord God, what you deserve, Lord God, more than, Lord God. Lord God, dahil wala kaming kaya ibigay sa lahat ng nabigay mo sa amin, Panginoon. Wala kaming kaya ipantapat doon, Panginoon. Kaya in the simple ways that we could give as an act of worship, we give it to you. In the simple ways, Lord God, that we come here on church every Sunday, Lord God, we want to give our very best because you've given your best for all of us, Lord God. And for the next weeks to come, Lord God, teach us all the more on how to worship you. Lord God, this is not over. We're just starting to learn how to worship you, Lord. And we're excited to worship you even more in a more deeper level. And we're excited, Lord God, and we'll be amazed, Lord God, in the presence that you're going to let us experience from this day forward. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, for this wonderful day. Thank you, Lord God, for your wonderful presence, Lord God. Thank you for allowing us to praise and worship you, Lord God. And Lord God, we just want to give you all the glory and all the praise in the name of the Father, of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Everybody shout, Amen and Amen. God bless everyone. Have a blessed Sunday ahead. Have a blessed week ahead. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.